Well, good morning, everyone. Well, good morning. We're almost, we're almost at the end of a series of lessons that we've been doing since the beginning of May. And it's a series of lessons of a series of people that we call God's second team. And, but before we do, though, before we do, though, I asked uh, Roger if he would uh, open us up, uh, lead us off in our opening prayer. Roger. Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity that we have this morning. Father, we thank you for each soul that's here, Father, to listen to this lesson. We know that uh, Ray will do a fantastic job, Father. Thank you so much for his commitment. In doing so, Father, we know that we have the responsibility to listen intently, Father, to participate in this class so that we may learn from it, that we may use it to strengthen ourselves and edify each other. Father, we know that this opportunity we have this morning is only here because of the sacrifice your son made so long ago. For this father, we thank you. In his most precious name, Amen. Well, Tammy and I came back from West Virginia a couple weeks ago, and uh, and when we came back, I was starting I was I was starting to uh, take notes down on my lesson, and and, and actually this morning we're going to be talking about Andrew, the humble evangelist. Now, when I was, for some absolutely strange reason, when I was preparing this lesson. Some song came into my head. Late last year, Disney released a very popular animated film called Encanto. There's one particular song in that movie which, which when I was preparing this lesson, it kept going in my head. In fact, it still is right now. And it's called We Don't Talk About Bruno. And like I said, my niece, my niece Lily, my brother Matt's... Uh, Youngest daughter, she loves that movie so much. I mean, you could mute that film and she could say every word of dialogue for that movie and she could sing every, every lyric of every song of that movie, even that one, especially that song. <clears throat> but, why I'm, but why I brought that song up is because when I was going through my lesson, I noticed there is not much written about Andrew. <laughs> and I'm like, why, why don't we talk about Andrew? I said, well, we must talk about Andrew. <laughs> Do you know that it's because of Andrew, you know, uh, Jesus never would have met Simon Peter? Did you know that? And do you also know that uh, Andrew was also considered the very first disciple? He was the first one. Yep. And as a matter of fact, if we look, and, uh, and I was also uh, looking at the, I think about the 12, 12 disciples. If you look in Matt chapter 10... Matt chapter 10. It's interesting because in the, of all four Gospels, John is the only one that doesn't have all, at least I don't think it does, I, he, the one that doesn't have all 12 disciples mentioned. Yeah, in Matthew chapter 10, and starting in verse, starting in verse 2, where he says, Now the names of the 12 apostles are these. First, Simon, who is called Peter. And Andrew, his brother. James, the son of Zebedee. And John, his brother. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, the son of Alphaeus. And Labaius, whose surname, whose surname is Thaddeus. Simon the Canaanite. And Judas Iscariot, who would end up betraying Jesus. And it's strange because, and like I said, now even though Peter, even though Peter is right there, he's mentioned first, but technically Andrew was the one, was the one that was first because he led his brother to Jesus. As a matter of fact, I, originally he was, originally he was a follower of John the Baptist. But before we get into that, let's talk about his short thing about his background here John in John 1 verses 40 through 42 40 and 42 it says one of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew Simon Peter's brother he first found his own brother Simon and said to him we have found the Messiah which is translated the Christ and he brought him to Jesus. 
Now when Jesus looked at him, and he said, You are Simon, the son of Jonah, and you shall be called Cephas, which is translated a stone. Now if you, look, if you scroll down to, um, if you look down in verse 44, it also tells you basically where he was born. It says, Now Philip from Bethsaida, the city, it's talking about, uh, now Philip was from Bethsaida, also the city of Andrew and Peter. Now Andrew was very enthusiastic. He was very enthusiastic about Jesus. As a matter of fact, if we, in John chapter 1, we go down to uh, verse 29. Verse 29. <clears throat> yeah, there we go. We talk about the next, uh, starting with verse 29, he says, The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him, and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who is preferred before me, for he was before me. I did not know him, but that he should be revealed to Israel. Therefore, I came baptizing with water. And John bore witness, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he remained upon him. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. Then it continues on uh, verse 35 where it says, Again, the next day John stood with two of his disciples looking at Jesus, and he walked, and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned, and seeing them following, said, said to them, What do you seek? They said to him, Rabbi, which is to say when, I, when translated teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying and remained with him that day. Now it was about the tenth hour. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's uh, brother. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. So he was a follower. So originally, Andrew, he was a follower of John the Baptist. But when John the Baptist showed Andrew who the Messiah was, and he pointed him out and said, there's the man, there's the man, there's the Lamb of God right there who will take away the sin of the world. That man right there. Andrew followed him, and he brought his brother, brother Peter, to him. <laughs> and if you look at John, let's see. And he was very resourceful too. Now, if you look in uh, John chapter six, John chapter six, and verses eight and nine. Let's see, John six, eight and nine. Here we are. <clears throat> Oh yeah. <clears throat> actually, actually, let me actually let me correct that. Let me uh, move to John chapter. My mistake. John chapter twelve. Let me move to John chapter twelve. <laughs> John chapter twelve. Because he was also because he was also helpful around the time when they were feeding when they were feeding the five thousand. Let me see chapter twelve. I hope I'm getting this right. Actually, <laughs> yeah, chapter 12. But before that, uh, he was also, uh, how helpful was he in bringing people to Jesus? Well, there were some, if you look at uh, chapter 12, John chapter 12, starting with verse 20, he said, Now there were certain Greeks among those who came up to worship at the feast. Then they came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida, of Galilee, 
and asked him, saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip came and told Andrew, and in turn Andrew and Philip told Jesus. But Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it. And he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where, I, and where I am, there my servant will also be. If anyone serves me, him, my father, will honor. And like I said, that, um, and Andrew, Andrew was also very helpful in the, the feeding of the five. If we go back to chapter 6, John chapter 6, he was also very helpful around the time when Jesus fed the 5,000. So if you look at chapter 6, let's see, chapter 6, here we are. In chapter 6, starting with verse 1, it says, After these things, Jesus went over to the Sea of Galilee, which is the seat of Tiberias. Then a great multitude followed him, because they saw his signs, which he performed on those who were diseased. And Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. Now the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was near. Then Jesus lifted his eyes, and seeing a great multitude coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread that these may eat? But this he said to test them, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, and said, Two hundred denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may have a little. One of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish, but what are they among so many? Then Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples and disciples to those sitting down, and likewise of the fish, as much as they wanted. So when they were filled, he said to his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, so that nothing is lost. Therefore they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves which were left over by those who had eaten. Then those men, whom they had seen the sign that Jesus did, this is truly the prophet who has come into the world. One of the things I've been wanting to say about uh, say about Andrew is that Andrew, you know, like I say, he's not really mentioned that much. He's not really mentioned that much in the Bible. I mean, no more than his brother Simon Peter is, because according to my or my notes right here, so he is, I mean, Simon Peter, frankly, not, not to sound insulting, but he got more, sounds like he got more press than Andrew did. Yes, he, of course, uh, Simon Peter, of course, you got to remember, Simon Peter is also, and Andrew's the one who brought people to Jesus. And Simon Peter, Simon Peter being one of them, you got to remember, Simon Peter is also the one who, uh, after Jesus for his third time, predicted what, he, what was going to happen to him. He said that he would be handed over to his enemies, and he would be put to death, and he would arise after the third day. And then and it was Peter, out of all 12 of the disciples, Peter was the one that told Jesus, no, no, it says, no, that will not happen. That is not going to happen to you. In fact, I would rather die in your place. So Jesus will look at Simon Peter and say, really, would you really die for me? Surely I say to you that before the cock crows, you will have denied ever knowing me three times. Now, can you imagine how stunned that Peter must have felt? Now, I didn't. And it, now, would you have? Would you have? After Jesus would say that to you, say you were going to do that. Now, would you look at Jesus and say, 
What, me? I says, no. This is never would I ever do that to you. I says, never. I am too faithful to you. I would never, ever deny you. And yet when Jesus was arrested and taken before the Sanhedrin, where was Simon Peter? He wasn't in there with Jesus. He was outside. He was outside, you know, waiting to see what was going to happen. And while he was waiting, three different people approached him and recognized him. The saying is, oh, yeah, you, uh, I said, yeah, you were with, I said, you're one of his followers, aren't you? And he said, and of course he could have, could have admitted it and says, yes, I am. Yes, I am one of his disciples. But instead he got scared and he just flat out said, no, no I don't know him. I, I don't know, I don't know Jesus. And then the second person saying, yeah, you're, in fact, you're a Galilean. I, re I recognize, I recognize you. You're a Galilean. I said, you were one of his followers and he and once again in a cowardly fashion he just said no 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 I, I don't know him I don't know him third time somebody else recognized him and says yeah you are yeah I know you you're one of his followers and then once again no I did not then all of a sudden in the back off in the distance he hears a very familiar sound the sound of a cock crowing and it took that sound for Simon Peter to refresh in Simon Peter's memory about what Jesus told him, what was going to happen, and he and when he re when he heard that sound, that made Peter. He broke down and cried, and he was like, "Oh no, I oh no, I actually did, I actually did betray him." <clears throat> and he went against me is um, and all the other disciples. All the other disciples, you know, they're not, mm, that, uh, some, some of them I don't, they're not really mentioned, not too many are mentioned at all, like uh, Thaddeus, one second, yeah, like if we go back to, let me see, Matt chapter 10, let me go back to Matthew chapter 10 here, Matthew, here we go, chapter 10, yeah, like some of the other disciples, you don't really see much. You don't really see too much like Bartholomew. Uh, now, Matt, now Matthew, Matthew, you see him, you, you know him because he was a tax collector before he joined Jesus. And Thomas, now Thomas, you really, now once again, that's another person you don't really hear that much of because he is notoriously known for you know, an expression that, you know, people are, something people are called, some people are called a doubting Thomas, meaning that, you know, you know, he was told that Jesus resurrected, but Thomas was like, I'll believe it when I see, when I see the nail prints in his hands, in his feet, and the, the whole, in the uh, marking on his side from where the spear went in. And then also there's like Simon the Canaanite, Joseph, son of Alphaeus. There's that much, like I said, that, and well, and then of course you got Judas Iscariot. Judas Iscariot, who of course, being the well notorious of all of them because he was the one that betrayed Jesus. And the difference between the act that he did against, he did against Jesus and the one that Simon Peter did is Judas Iscariot actually ended his own life. He was destroyed and ended his own life. Where Simon Peter, he just felt bad. He just felt terrible for what he did. And Jesus knew that he was going to do it. Well, anyway, um, well, like I say, you know, they're, they're, and Andrew is another one of those who don't, you know, he's, he's not mentioned that much. He's not really mentioned that much in the, in the uh, New Testament. However, if you look in Proverbs, Proverbs, I mean, Andrew he possessed a very meek and humble spirit that would that would follow the truth. If you look in Proverbs, chapter twenty-three, Proverbs chapter twenty-three, and verse twenty-three, twenty-three. Here we go. Okay, Proverbs. 20, 23, verse 23, it says, Buy the truth and do not sell it. Also, wisdom 
and instruction and understanding. <laughs> now, just like Andrew, if we know, if we know enough to decide to follow the Lord, then we know enough to bring others to the Lord. <laughs> I forgot where I was here. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> okay, now let me see. If we look in Philippians, let's see, Philippians, Philippians chapter 2, chapter 2, verse 13. Say, For it is God who works in both, in you both to will and to do. For his good pleasure. Now, as I said, uh, Andrew, his main job was bringing people to Jesus. If you look at First Peter, First Peter chapter two, First Peter chapter two. Thank you. One second. First Peter. First Peter, chapter two, and verses nine and ten. It says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Okay, and uh, like I said, uh, um, Andrew, like I said, he was very enthusiastic about Christ, and he was always, always a lover, a seeker of the truth. And he was also very resourceful. Let me see, in John chapter 6, back, John chapter 6, John chapter 6, 8 and 9, verses 8. And nine. Yeah, back. It was also resourceful, especially, especially when it came back to the. When we go back to talking about the feeding of the five thousand, we said one of or the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, "There is a lad here with five barley loaves and two small fish. But what are they among so many?" And then, and then also Andrew was also sent on a mission in, in Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, let's see if I can find it here. Chapter 10. And hmm, verses 5 through 8. Okay. And he was sent on a mission. It says, These twelve Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying, do not go into the way of the Gentiles. Do not enter a city of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach saying, the kingdom of God is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Provide neither gold nor silver, nor or copper in your money belts, nor bag for your journey, nor two tunics, nor sandals, nor staffs, for a worker is worthy of his food. And then, then after at the end of Jesus' life, where he was also there when Jesus sent them the Great Commission. It was called the Great Commission. We're in Matthew, in Matthew chapter 28, chapter 28, starting in verse 16, starting in verse 16, it says, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed to them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. 
Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. And he was also there, and in Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 1, he was also there when he actually witnessed Jesus ascending to heaven. In chapter 1, verses, starting with verse, verse 4, it says, And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, and he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Now there are, um, now like I said, when I was um, when I was doing my lesson, I was showing I was showing this uh, book to Barry a little while ago. I got I actually got this from Walmart. This book right here has a bunch of charts. It has maps, time, timelines, even talks about all uh, details about all 12 disciples. And some of my, some of the facts I got down from my lesson actually came from this book about Andrew. One of the things I found out about him, um, it says right here, a 7th century story suggests that Andrew was crucified on an X-shaped cross by a Roman proconsul. <clears throat> Whereas as opposed to his brother, Simon Peter, who also was crucified, but he was crucified on the traditional cross that Jesus was crucified on, with the one exception, Simon Peter requested to be crucified upside down, because he, he did not feel he was worthy about being dying the same way that his master did, which is one of the very few times you ever see Romans ever actually are actually fulfilling a request. So they did. They crucified Simon Peter upside down. There's not much, like I said, there's not really that much left to talk about Andrew, but just, just remember that um, Andrew, if it weren't for Andrew, you would not know anything about Simon Peter. Because Andrew, Andrew was the first. He's the one whose job was to lead people to Jesus. Right after when he was listening to John the Baptist. John the Baptist pointed him out. John the Baptist pointed him out to his, to his disciples. And he said, that's the, there's the son of God. That's, that's the lamb of God right there. That's the man who will take away the sin of the world. And after that, Andrew followed him and also brought him to his brother, Simon Peter. Does anybody have any uh, questions or comments, maybe? Anybody? Yeah, yes, Bill. Talk. You know, we have been talking about uh, the nature of these uh, people as being on the second team. Yeah. And I'm not being critical at all of that, don't get me wrong, but, yeah. but I'm not sure that they are on the second team because mm -hmm. if you look right at the end of the book of John, John said that these things are written that you might believe in the Christ. But he did a lot of other 
Oh, yeah. Well, it's not written in this book because oh, okay. if it did, it'd be a huge book. Exactly. Mm -hmm. To the same thing as a, as a matter of fact regarding the apostles. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We have a record here in the book of Acts. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, <coughs> Peter and John there in the first eight chapters. Mm -hmm. And then after that, the rest of the book of Acts relates to the work primarily of Paul. No. Now that turned out so chest yeah. that the other apostles were not involved. No. If the scripture told us all that they did, yeah. then this big building might not even hold the book. Exactly. So I think that's worth the noting that all of these other apostles yeah. may have been very busy. Mm -hmm. We just do not have a record of it. Yeah, exactly. Well, like I, well, like I was uh, saying a while ago, Bill, so this, this book right here I got from uh, Walmart. It actually, there's actually a section in here that, has, that talks about each, each of the disciples. And they talk about what, you know, what may have happened to them, you know, after, like toward the end of their lives and everything. Like that thing about, like I just said about Andrew, yeah, that, that's mentioned in here, is they read somewhere where he, that where he may have been crucified. He was crucified, but he was crucified on an X-shaped, on an X-shaped cross instead of the traditional like t-shaped one like jesus was crucified on and i agree yeah and i agree with you right there because it's a shame peter is sometimes qualified as being on the first team and somehow andrew is brought put down here as being part of god's second where technically if it weren't like i like i've said twice already that if it weren't for andrew <laughs> if it weren't for andrew you would not jesus would never have met simon peter <laughs> exactly. We yeah. There's there's nothing even like, like uh, Bill was pointing out. The book of Acts, book, uh, or majority of the book of the Acts, especially the latter part of book of Acts, mainly centers on the on the uh, events of Paul. Uh, Paul after after from the time he from the time he. Um, when he was on the road to Damascus to when he repented and when he was baptized and up to and like I said toward the end of Acts it says it all basically talked about well basically Paul and then only the very first part deal with Acts done by uh, Peter and maybe a few of the other like disciples like Philip I think Philip was I think I believe is mentioned in I think is mentioned in Acts too but other than that, you really, all the other books, you don't really hear that much mention of the other disciples. You would have to, you would have to research very, very, very carefully. You'd have to find some reason to find out what ever became, what really became of the other disciples. What really became of them? Yes, Rose Rock. Yeah, the last apostle that was chosen was Paul. Yeah. You just talked about him. He yeah. was a Gentile to the, to the uh, I mean, he was an apostle to the Gentiles. Yeah. He wrote a huge portion of the Yes, he did. And stuff. And the reason why we hear so much about him is because it's from his own writings, uh -huh. you know, and he had an enormous impact because of his his uh, his connection to the his understanding of the Gentile world and his travels, obviously, as many missionary journeys and stuff like that. Yeah, so just like Brother Langley was saying and you uh -huh. were saying, there's apostles that we don't have one word of where they went after Christ's crucifixion. Yeah. There's lots of tradition that a lot of them went to east and to, to media and to even as far as India and there's some evidence, not a lot, but some evidence that there was some type of contact yeah. but uh, it's really interesting like Brother you know, Langley was saying 17 these guys that we've talked about in these lessons as uh -huh. in, 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 you know, in the congregation a lot of these, these guys that nobody had ever heard of before, they're mentioned more than some of the actual apostles exactly. so we don't know what happened, like I said we don't know what yeah, happened. Yeah, just like last month when I did the monastic yeah. I did Manasseh. He was he's even he's mentioned more than any of the like like the, the ones I mentioned, like Bartholomew and Thad Thaddeus, uh, Simon the Canaanite. Ain't that much you not that much you hear about any of them. Not much. As a matter of fact, in the book of uh, John, in the Gospel of John, it says uh, you don't really see a listing of the disciples in that. It's just the just the first three just the first three books. <laughs> yes, Bill. Exactly. But 
thought the scripture does not reveal it. Mm -hmm. But we have enough to know about God and his love for us and what he speaks of us. Exactly. And that's what the Bible tells us. Absolutely. Yeah, there's another thing, another thing about this that the, about this particular book is it also it al it also actually has a listing of other other disciples too. I mean, not just not just the tw main twelve, but also there it also mentions others others in here too. I mean, many hmm, there are many uh, disciples in here. I mean, there are lots uh, some some that are mentioned very. Very briefly, mm. Mm. but like I say, if you ever go to, if you go to Walmart, if you go to Walmart, if you go back in the uh, book section, you might be able to find you might even find this back there because it's really, it's really neat. It's really neat. It has lots of, <clears throat> it's got it's got lots of, you know, charts, mm, charts right here. I was even showing uh, Steve Langley. I was showing him before. I, there was even a diagram in here about what it might have looked like inside Noah's Ark. But what all the compartments would have looked like and everything, where Noah and his family would have stayed and everything. It's pretty it's pretty fascinating. And, and like I say, you would have to you would have to look very, very hard, very carefully to see about what actually happened to the other the other disciples, including including the aforementioned Andrew. You have to look very carefully. But the, but like Bill says. You know, God's word, when it comes to spreading God's word, spreading God's word, you know, Andrew Andrew started something. He, he led people. He led people to Jesus. Now that's up to you to, to continue following and possibly, maybe, and possibly if your heart, you know, with your heart into it, to bring people even closer hmm, to Jesus. Anybody else have any, any comments, any any comments? Any questions? None. Well, normally I was supposed to. Technically, I was supposed to do this lesson last uh, next week, but uh, unfortunately, um, George P. Sari, who was supposed to have been here this morning, unfortunately, uh, George is home um, with COVID, and uh, and uh, last night, last night, I think Ken, I think Ken said you get, get you say you got. Did you you call George last night? Uh, yeah, he called George last night. George's voice was not exactly up to par yet. So, so last night I told, um, so I told Ken. I said, if you want to, I'll come up here and I'll talk about Andrew because we must talk about Andrew. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, and I still can't get that song out of my head. <laughs> yeah, so if I have an aching to sing it, I'll just cover the mic. <laughs> <clears throat> But I, I don't know why it is. For some unknown reason, when that when that song just came in my head, I'm like, and I'm and I'm I'm sitting here writing notes down for it. I'm like, I'm like, and then, I mean, the song's not even playing. It's not even playing. It's just in my head. It says we. I keep hearing we don't talk about Bruno, no, no. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, thanks a lot, Lin Manuel Miranda. Thank you. <clears throat> and I, <clears throat> and the movie that movie was co-directed by somebody I used to work with. Byron Howard, yeah, I used to work with him in our animation attraction, and uh, oh boy, if I ever saw Byron Howard again, I'd thank him too. <laughs> I'll be sure to thank him too. Yes, Barry. As you pointed out, with Andrew, every time we see him in the Gospel of John, he's bringing someone to Jesus. Yes. And uh, I think that just points out the fact that we may feel like I'm not capable of doing this or that or whatever, yeah. but that Andrew brought him to Jesus, and that's what we're supposed to do as God's disciples, exactly. is to bring people to Jesus and let them investigate his life and then exactly. form their conclusions and their obedience to him, hopefully. Uh -huh. But um, Andrew, and even with Greek-speaking yeah. people in John chapter 12, mm -hmm. um, he didn't have any prejudice, he just brought yeah. them. Yeah, and so it's like I was saying earlier about, you know, it's it's strange that um, Peter Peter is actually considered to be part of the first team, and Andrew somehow somehow ended up being classified as being under the second, when in fact if it weren't for Andrew, there wouldn't be Peter. So in my opinion, I think, and I think Andrew after reading, 
after reading this right here, I th it feels like he got the short end, more like he got the short end of the stick here. I mean, it felt like he took a back seat to his big brother. <laughs> but, like I say, he did, he did what he was supposed to do. I mean, he started off, he, he followed John the Baptist. And John the Baptist pointed out who the person was that he's to follow. He said, There's the, there is the Lamb of God who will take away the sin of the world. Tell him, he says, that's who you should follow. And he did. And he followed him. And he brought, he brought Jesus to his brother Simon, Peter, who Jesus referred to him as the rock. And he said, on this rock, I will build my church. Now, you know, normally, now you would think somebody like Andrew would be like, it, what, what, what about me? <laughs> what, what, what about me? I'm, I'm, I, I brought him here. <laughs> can, can I be called something too? I mean, uh, I mean, well, you're calling my brother Rock. I mean, what, what, what about uh, what, what about me? <laughs> well, now you would think somebody like that, you would react like that. But no, Andrew, that's what made Andrew humble. He, he feels like he's doing his job. He's doing his job. He's, he's bringing people to Jesus, his brother being one of them. I mean, he was doing, I mean, he was continuing something that was started by John the Baptist. And he, and he continued up until he died. Yes, Bill. about that's about if they any more questions or comments or no questions well that's about it for my lesson here so I want to thank everybody thank you all for listening and uh, thanks for the uh, participation and like I said hopefully George hopefully George will feel better next week and he'll bring us his lesson for next week thanks for your anticipation